Welcome back to the Conspiracy Outpost. I'm your host, Casey. I'm Mike. I'm Joe. I'm Nate Nasty. Around the globe, dating back to ancient times and even now, theories of the flat earth started arising. Are we on a disc skipping through the universe or on a ball spinning to no end? Is the flat earth an unproven theory or an elaborate hoax? Well, today we have a special guest joining us to give us his expert opinion on the matter. So without further delay, let us introduce Mark Sargent. Hi, guys. <laughs> thank, thank, by the way, thank you. Thank you for one for thank you for having me. And thank you for being the most delayed podcast I've ever done. <laughs> Meaning you guys booked this six months ago. <laughs> and I, I remember when I got it, I was like six months. <laughs> going, uh, the like, the house is on it? top of shit. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> smokes, you know how much, what could happen between now and then? And it's like, all right, sure. Yeah, why not? Absolutely. Six months. If you guys can actually remember to do it, here we are six months later. So yeah, how, I wasn't, how I wasn't sure how hard it is to, to book someone for an interview. So I wanted to give me plenty of time, you know, <laughs> you're actually, you're actually, <laughs> you, could have, you could have almost had a kid. I mean, seriously. <laughs> uh, you're actually our first guest on this podcast. So it's, oh, nice. uh, oh, wait, 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 I'm your first guest. And you yes. booked me six months out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could have probably got several more guests in that time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you would have, would have been more insulting if you would have bumped me like like this week. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, sorry, can't do it this week. That would have been perfect. I didn't I would have I would have read you guys the riot act, but it, but I would have remembered that story forever. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so what? Uh, what do you guys? I, I I gotta ask. What what made you call me? What? How'd you get into this? Or somebody over there got into this? Well, we're um, we're just a we're just a conspiracy uh, podcast. We just talk about everything, whether we believe it or not. And uh, flat Earth is one of the biggest conspiracies out there. So we yeah. thought we'd dive on into it and see if we can get someone on. And you're one of the main people that I know that. Uh, one of the main proponents for uh flat earth so it's super awesome that we got you yeah 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 no no worries at all um and yeah it is the the biggest thing out there uh physically and as far as getting people triggered there is no topic in the conspiracy world that gets people more triggered than this which is weird because you know there's there's a lot of touchy subjects out there you know if you talk about like jfk or 9 11 or sandy hook or stuff like that yeah or but, the yeah. multitude of nazi ones that are out there yeah the, the, they, paper clip and everything people people do get worked up but but flat earth really gets people worked up and i've been doing this for over seven years uh because it is the only thing we debunk to children you know, there's no other topic we bring up to uh, a first grade class in the conspiracy world except for flat earth. We, you know, you, you put the globe literally like in the first week they're there. It's like, oh, yeah, people used to think the earth was flat, but now we know it looks like this. And you put that little nice blue toy and you spin it around and that's it. And then you put it in the corner of the classroom and you leave it there for 12 years. But then, you know, <laughs> so... That's that probably why one of the reasons why people get so uh, upset with it, why it can be such a touchy subject, is because such, it's like such a fundamental understanding that people have, you know, right? Like oh, yeah. something with politics, it's like, oh yeah, political shit happens. It's all these different interests and motivations in doing it. But for like the flat earth, it's kind of difficult to ascertain the motivation for keeping up this conspiracy. Well, okay, there, there's a couple points you touched on there, but the, the first one is, yeah, um, it, people get triggered mostly because of the conditioning. If you're told this your entire life, you might as well, the only thing I compare it to is telling somebody after they've turned like 30 years old that they're adopted. You know, you throw that at somebody and they'd be like, get out of here. And then you just keep like throwing, put, throwing, putting files on their desk. That's like, nope, this is why, this is why, this is why. And then all of a sudden, if they, you know, that, that glimmer sinks in that they might be adopted, then it just ripples back in time and they, they freak out. You know, you get one of those weird movie montage flashbacks yeah. where, where it really, uh, you know, you get a weird form of PTSD. But as far as why, to the second point there, it's like, why keep this a secret? 
right? Yeah. You're a conspiracy group. Yeah. I mean, you, you, we don't have to cover the basics of conspiracies. You keep this a secret because, it, in fact, mostly I, I've kind of changed my tune on this, where the, okay. the big reason why you keep it a secret is because of just bad timing. Meaning we didn't even know for sure what this world looked like. Uh, and by the way, it's not some Asgard pancake thing flying through space. It's just a, <laughs> it's, the, 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 the Thor the Thor movies did us no favors at all. You know, cosmic waterfalls. Like, oh god. Well, Terry Pratchett did it pretty well. This world was the shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this this is one of those things where you keep it a secret because if if our best and brightest didn't figure it out until about uh, about 1960. The, our civilization has already been established. Everything's already been built. The infrastructure's already been laid. And it's not what you stand to gain. It's what you stand to lose. So if you're part of, I call them the authority. You want to call them whatever. You know, combination of overlapping groups. You know, the Illuminati, the Bilderbergs, the Rothschilds, the CFR, trilaterals, blah, blah, blah. You mm -hmm. just go on and on. for. But but they all, you know, they're, they're all spider webs within spider webs. I call them the authority. And... The authority doesn't take chances with power. So if all of a sudden you find out in 1960 that you're you're living inside a building, really, we, we, you, you sit down. It's a very short meeting, which is, okay, what could go wrong? <laughs> you know, you sit around the, the X-Files, if you remember the X-Files, where, you know, dark, dark table, everyone's smoking for some reason. You know, and and the guy at the end is like, well, what's the worst that could happen? And there's three things that could happen. They're really, really horrible. Um, one, academically, uh, all your physical sciences just get turned upside down immediately. I mean, not just ast astronomy and astrophysics, which get gutted. Uh, any of your remaining physical sciences, geology, hydrology, biology, whatever is it, those just get, I mean, libraries have to be emptied and restocked and it would take forever. And that's every university in the world. Uh, economically, you would have to suspend markets for months. For, I, I don't know how many months, just because you don't know what it means from the financial sector, but it would mean a lot. I mean, the markets react on anything nowadays. And then um, the, the last one would be the, the religious side of it. So you're giving the, the five major religious houses of this world, um, Judaism, Buddhism, uh, Hinduism, Islam, and Christianity. You're giving them all leverage against science simultaneously. And you're asking all these groups that, that hold sway over, what, 80% of the population to, to show restraint against an institution of science that's been beating them over the heads with textbooks for at least five centuries. That's a really short Illuminati meeting. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah, we're going to put a pin in this. <laughs> nobody's, nobody's saying anything until we can figure out uh, how to disseminate it to the public. And that's it. I mean, in 1960, you make that decision. It's like, okay, we don't tell anybody. Let's lock down whatever we can to keep anyone from accidentally figuring this out. So you lock down Antarctica, Antarctica with the Antarctic Treaty. And uh, you, um, uh, you militarize space. And that's it. And, and then you just spend more and more money to, to cover it up, and it starts out really slow. And 1960 was fairly easy to do. Now, much, much more difficult uh, because of, of little things in the way. We, I mean, there's some things you can kick your, the can down the road, like um, the, moon, the moon program, for example, Artemis, which you've probably heard of. You know, that's, that's supposedly the new, the new moon, moon program where they swear you know, the, the, the first new person to be on the, the moon is going to be a woman. And I don't know how many people they're going to send in the capsule, but whatever. The, it, it's really tough to fake things nowadays because of the internet. So, sorry, that's that's my little my little rant. And, and you guys coming oh. from a conspiracy world, you know how, I mean, you guys spend your days dissecting conspiracies. Imagine yeah. that, but on a mass media scale, right? I mean, um, every movie that comes out is gone through frame by frame by nerds in their underwear in Nebraska at 3 a.m., Right? Just looking through just yeah. to make sure, you know, people, I, I'll give you one, I know I rambled, but let me get this one thing out, which is uh, the Lord of the Rings, the original, right? The, the first one, the Fellowship of the Ring. So A lot good. of people don't know this, but when it first came out, when it was in, rolled out into theaters back in the, the late 90s, uh, the, when they were leaving the Shire, there was a car driving off, a white <laughs> car driving off in the distance. Oh, shit. And, yeah. yeah. 
everybody <laughs> missed it because they were staring at the damn hobbits. And then all of a sudden, somebody's <laughs> watching, you know, watching it in the theater going, Hey, that car shouldn't be there. <laughs> they were uh, they were sim- simultaneously filming a Mazda commercial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was it was just wild. But the point is, is that it, it it doesn't matter how much money you spend on a production; it's the weakest link which will which will break everything. And mm-hmm. you you guys have seen this with different conspiracies. Some we won't name. Where where all it takes is one little thing. It's the it's it's you know it's it's all links in a chain. If one chain breaks. The, the the rest of it is is vulnerable. So sorry. Anyway, I ramble. No, you're, oh, it's you're all good. good. Uh, uh, this is what you're a here lot for. Of great great content. A lot of great <laughs> yeah. information that I didn't know. Um, <laughs> I, I got a lot of it. But anyway, what else? What else you got? Um, I'd like to just touch on one of the first things that you said in 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 uh, uh, rant, as you would call it rant. But um, you said you've been doing this for seven years. Is that when you got like started believing in flat Earth, or how long have you been a believer? Oh, but but seven years, and um, so okay. the doc, the documentary, which um, and I, you guys probably didn't watch it. Uh, is it under the dome? Behind the curve. Behind the curve. Thank you. I wa- yeah, I watched yeah, the yeah. other one. The um, uh, behind the curve, which was a, a Netflix thing. I mean, they didn't produce it. It was mm-hmm. shot by an LA film team, and Netflix bought it later. In fact, uh, yeah. I think yeah. it's on Amazon now. Netflix. It ran for three years, but anyway. Um, I got I got into it in 2014 because kind of like you guys, uh, only I'm older. Uh, I ran out of conspiracies to look at. Uh, I never got married or had kids, and so I had a lot of free time on my hands, huge amounts of free time. And the internet was just starting to ramp up when I was in my 30s, and so early 30s. And so, you know, I got a I got a good jump on what was going on, and and went down the early rabbit holes, and f- to where finally around 2014, I was out of ideas as far as conspiracies go. I looked at just about everything you could think of, and like you guys, some I liked, some I didn't, but I had an opinion on all of them. And there was one that I just didn't want to look at because why would the hell would you look at it? It's just the most stupid thing ever, which was flat Earth. And I decided, it's like, eh, I'm not getting any younger. Might as well tick this thing off my bucket list. And it was the worst mistake ever. And uh, or the best. The, the what? Or, or the best, yeah. Or the and, best one, I mean. Well, I mean, it took me places I never, ever thought I would go. Um, but I, 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 it was supposed to be a weekend project for me. It's like, oh, I'll spend a weekend, blow this thing out of the water, and then I can get back to playing video games. And that weekend turned into nine months of uh, oh, just just going through all these different threads and tugging on things and so many loose ends to where at the beginning of 2015, uh, I decided, okay, I'm just going to make a series of videos and put them out on the internet and put all my contact information out there, which, you know, is a really, really great idea. And, you know, my phone number, my physical address, my real name and, and the whole nine yards and say, okay, I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. Tell me where I went wrong. And instead of academics contacting me saying, okay, here's where you screwed up. Yeah, I forgot to carry the two here and you can, you know, close down your your YouTube channel and get back to your life. All these other people started contacting me, uh, you know, branches in the military and pilots and um, uh, missile instructors and air traffic controllers and you name it, all these weird people tied to travel. Sort of contacted me, and and some were anonymous, and some a lot weren't. And they said, "Okay, you're not nuts. Here's why." And they would give me all these these little tidbits in addition to what I already posted. And to where by the, by the end of 2015, this thing started to get started to really get some traction. And next thing you know, we you know we were doing a conference. Uh, our first conference was in 2017 down in Raleigh and it was it was a national conference and people flew in from all over the place and and it was just absolutely wild we, we couldn't even do anything and we we just kept getting bigger and bigger to where um in 2019 we could, could do nothing wrong and then 2020 uh you know the pandemic happened and and all the borders shut down and that pretty much stunted us for well, two years and change so there you go oh so anyway for your, for your listeners though real quick but because, you know, some people's like, what is that whole flatter thing? You're not living on a tiny little rock covered with a little bit of water and a little bit of air flying through an impossible universe. You are living in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling 
that it could look anywhere from a snow globe to a, a, a big aircraft hangar, for all we know. Is it possibly, and, like, uh, possibly like the Newman Show? The uh, Truman, Truman, Truman Show. Truman Newman, Newman. Newman. Show. Newman. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been on a Seinfeld kick. Like, yeah, I was about to say, is that, a, is that a Mandela effect? It's like, is it really called the Newman Show now? The, it might um, be where I'm from, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> the Newman Show. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm yeah, very, very much, very much like the Truman Show, and uh, that, and and it was so big and so well designed that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until 1960. And when they did, they just decided to not tell anybody because why would you back in 1960? And I don't know if they're ever going to, you know, just come out and say it, but they've been doing their, their best to, uh, the, to keep the space program uh, alive, at least in the consciousness of, of Americans in the world, which I always find fascinating, you know, the um, uh, real, real quick, you know, do I believe in the American space program? No, I don't. What I think is interesting, though, is when, when Americans I talk to, I get it. It's like, you know, wave the flag. Why do you believe the Americans went to the moon? It's like, well, because of patriotism. There was um, uh, a commentator on Fox News, and she literally said, she goes, I believe in the moon landings because I'm a patriot. It's like, wow. It's like translation. <laughs> you're not a good American unless you believe <laughs> hey, everything, everything the government tells you. And but I, when I go I outside of this country, oh. I ask them, I go, why do you think the Americans went to the moon, right? They all say the exact same thing. They say, well, because it was on television. I, so I go, and? Yeah. It's like, well, your, your, your news <laughs> channels would never lie. <laughs> it's like, wow, okay. Yeah, I, I believe uh, nowadays more than ever that um, people believe, like, you know, news channels are lying to them because they, now they're in factions. So, well, I mean, well, I guess okay. they're blinded by their, their yeah. factions. So, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's a good argument to throw at people. In fact, I've, I've thrown it at people for the last couple of years. I say, people say, oh, the news doesn't lie okay i really resolved these two sentences ready everything on cnn is absolutely true and everything on fox news is absolutely true <laughs> you can't resolve <laughs> both of them <laughs> so it, it's got to be one or the other because i've talked to people it's like no cnn lies through their teeth it's like oh fox news is a bunch of freaking liars it's like yeah i know and so so <laughs> you believe that, that the news can lie but only because you're either red team or your blue team yeah yeah Tribalism at its See, I, I've, Back to that argument of the patriotism thing, that's just hilarious. Because yeah. if they would actually pay attention to, to the history that they're saying, Russia was there first. Well, <laughs> Russia, uh, yeah, that's a whole nother not, thing, by the way. Not the moon, was... but like, if they're going off the history that they believe, then, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, by the way, you know, don't forget, I mean, this predates you guys. You guys sound pretty young, but, uh, you know, there, <laughs> there was a thing called the space race. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, back in the 60s, where it was the United States, it was the astronauts and cosmonauts, you know, the Russian version of astronauts. Why they call them cosmonauts, I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. Where, you know, there was this big race where we were going to, you know, Russia was way ahead of us, supposedly. Right? You know, they had done all these things and all of a sudden we just went to the moon, moon and back six times. Boom, 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 boom. Not a single thing pro and problem happened except for Apollo 13, which is a whole nother thing. And when we went to the moon the first time, the Russians just quit. I'm sorry, the Soviet Union back then. Soviet oh, Union yeah. just quit. It's the first time I've ever seen that in the history of sports. It's like a first guy crosses the finish line. The other people are like, ah, no point even running. You know, just, they're poor sports. Yeah, it was <laughs> just, and that was it. The, I mean, the the the, <laughs> the narrative should have been. We all know how the, what the narrative was supposed to be. We put the three people on the moon. They put five. We put seven. They put nine. Small base, big base. Next thing you know, yeah. Time Magazine runs a story which says, has the Cold War reached the moon? <laughs> That's how the story is supposed to go. But it was the exact opposite. The, American, <laughs> the Americans went, and then the Americans quit in 1972, and nobody else went. No, I mean, there's like supposedly five, five countries with launch capability. Nobody bothered to send a single, or even attempt a single person after that. It's just staggering. Absolutely yeah, freaking st staggering. It all stopped when it's like extra, extra, read all about America puts a first hotel on the moon. 
Now everybody's going to Mars. Now everybody's going to Mars. Oh, Fuck yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that Mars really thing. Close. That's, yeah. that's um, going to happen. Yeah, sure. I got to take a take a step back, though, really quick, though. Uh, so in the idea of the flat earther, is there actually a moon or Mars or like uh, other planets? Nope. Nope. No, there's uh, not. Yeah, okay. No, the, the, the anything that's up in the sky is you might as well be in a in a planetarium. And it's I know like that date, that I know that dates me. And I don't know if you guys have ever been to a planetarium. It used to oh, be. Oh, I've thing. been to one. I, I've been to one. <laughs> you know, during during weekdays they would show things to school kids. You know, like oh look, here's the stars. And then on weekends they do like Laser Floyd, and people just get baked and, and watch Laser I've Floyd. I've taken I've taken some really good naps at the planetarium. Before. There you go. It's a perfect place to take a nap. You know, the chairs go <laughs> completely horizontal. It's, it's a dark relaxing. room. It's it's very peaceful. A great but, place um, to drop acid. There you go. <laughs> so, if, um, so if you're there, right? If you're if you're in a planetarium and you see the moon, right? The moon looks very spherical, you know, depending on on what sort of software they're using. And it's like, wow, it looks look spherical. It's like, yeah. Can you land on it? No. Why not? Well, because it's just a light on the ceiling. Well, who's to say when you walk out of that building, you're just not in a much much bigger building that had nothing to do with us? By the way, we didn't build this place. Not anywhere close. I'm, I'm going to steal a line from uh, a Contact with Jodie Foster. One of, one of the great humble lines where she meets the alien that looks like her father because that's what they do. And <laughs> and she goes, she goes, she goes, did you build this? It, you know, this this transit because we didn't build it. We don't know who did. <laughs> you know, it's, it was here when we got here. You know, and, and it was like, which There's was going to the door. Goes against power structures, which is power usually takes credit if no one else is willing to take credit. It's like, what well, they could have just as easy said, oh, yeah, we built it, blah, blah, blah. It's like, nope, nope. We compared that to like the pyramids, where whoever found the pyramids, the the, the, the Egyptians, they didn't build them. You know, they just found them and said, oh, yeah, and looked around. No one's around. It's like. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna take these. <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> we will, all we have to do is say we built them, and they will raise us to demigod level. And they did. It was perfect. They don't even, oh, didn't oh. even have to explain how they built it. Just said, nope, we built it. Took us thirty years. Any construction techniques? Nope. <laughs> anyway, sorry. No, oh, you're good. Um, I was curious. So, uh, you you like to you like to mention that like we're not on some some strange disc that's like hurling through the cosmos that we're like kind of in a building. So there's like yeah. you know there's, there's something of like a, a stable firmament framework, right? Um, yeah, I mean, think think of this. When you think of space, the only reason you're thinking of space is because of all the media you have absorbed over the years. Everything from educational films to more likely all the uh, all the science fiction stuff you've watched. I mean, you, know, you can kind of see it. The what? I said you can kind of see space, like looking up. Well, or with a, I mean, or with a telescope. Like I've used like a, a homemade telescope, and that's a pretty sure. old invention too, with the you know compound lenses. But uh, but if you're looking at a planetarium ceiling, this is different from a planetarium ceiling that's mm -hmm. only a hundred feet above you. If you're looking at a planetarium ceiling that's, say, 500 miles above you, yeah, constructed by an engineering team that's octaves above us, then really what are you looking at? I mean, think about this. Think, of, think if you showed somebody – and you remember why, well, again, you guys, are, you're young. If you showed an HD television to somebody back in the 70s, it would freak them out. I remember, you know, growing up with with cheap tell, you know, cheap early televisions, and when when the HD stuff came out, it's like, what is yeah, this? That's, um, we used to have to put in um, speaker <laughs> wires in the back of our TV just to get Fox yeah. to come in. We were kidding. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You remember how amazing N sixty four used to look? It was like, damn, these graphics are fucking banging. Now you go back and like Mario's whole face is just fucked up. It's not yeah, even it's like, like a polygon. Dude, they <laughs> <laughs> they could not get a nose better than a half of a fucking uh, triangular sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> by, by the way, I am a lifelong gamer, and that's why when Minecraft came out and just took off, I'm oh, yeah. staring at kids watching. You know, I'm, I'm watching this. I'm going, <laughs> why are you so excited about this? I go, this is literally the most blocky game ever created. <laughs> I mean, I mean, even Atari wouldn't make blocks this big. 
Yeah, the, the, <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy. My my kids, my kid is only four years old, and she knows who Minecraft Steve is, but never has touched Minecraft. So it's like, why are you excited about something you've never seen played? And look how blocky that is. If I was a kid and seen that, I was like, what's this crap? Where's cat dog? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, people. I I I point out like that. PewDiePie was his his re right. rise to fame was he was one of the early early people that posted him commentating on Minecraft videos of, of his own. You know, his own little Minecraft videos, and they were terrible. I mean, there's this one. It was like he got a Minecraft zombie stuck in a tree. And he's laughing for like 10 minutes straight. And I'm, I'm watching all these kids that think they thought yeah. it was the most hilarious thing ever. Yeah, hey guys, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of that guy. <laughs> no, I'm no, not I'm not either. Video game, video game, video hey, you game want, you commentary want, videos I'm not a fan of. You want to you wanna, you wanna have fun? Watch this. Go into, um, I know you guys got a browser up there somewhere. Go into YouTube and type in um, PewDiePie Flat Earth. PewDiePie. <laughs> watch this. See the thumbnail with the creepy looking Shrek get guy with the baseball cap? Is this uh is this the one that says uh wait? Yeah, Did people actually believe the earth is flat? Is that was that what he called it? Yeah. Yeah, that that, that where there's a man and the woman in the thumbnail? Yeah. Oh yeah. Gotcha. That's that's me. Looks like it. Oh that's oh that is you. Yeah. I, I have I had your Wikipedia page up earlier. Uh, <laughs> so just scrolling slow. through it before my wife. By the way, I didn't even know. I didn't even know. I didn't even know I had a wiki page until uh, like four or five months ago. Oh and yeah, then, I I just I, I typed in your name before. My wife was like, uh, "Why you be? Why are you creeping on somebody?" It's like oh, God, <laughs> we're doing a podcast with this guy, and I'd like to know a little bit about uh, a little about I a bit it. about what they say about yeah it. yeah i don't know who wrote it and i in fact i i still haven't read the whole thing because i just don't like looking at my own stuff that uh, must be know. surreal to actually know that enough. you have a wikipedia page about you i mean like, it's i guess it's something I, let's put it this way flat earth has got given me opportunities w without without really any effort on my part I told people that I go if i live long enough to write an autobiography it will be called unsolicited because I never had to pick up the phone. People just started calling me and calling me. I mean, granted, I put my number out there. But it was a lot of it was because media is just lazy. You know, if, you're, if they're looking to, to interview somebody, I mean, you get an intern or whatever, one of your junior producers, and you say, find someone to interview about Flat Earth. If they can't find somebody in the first 10 minutes, they, they get really frustrated. And it's like, they can always find me. You could, I think yeah. you can Google just Mark Sargent's phone number. It'll pop up. Oh, wow. <laughs> is that what you did, Casey? <laughs> <laughs> no, I emailed him. Okay. Yeah, but what, but you were you got the email from what YouTube? Yeah, YouTube. Yeah. I'm pretty sure your number is on YouTube too. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. I deliberately <laughs> put it out there so that and and again, my phone. I I knew people. My phone sitting right here next to me does not blow up because uh, uh, trolls trolls don't don't like spoofing phone numbers. Uh, and so they'll only troll me in the comment sections. They will not email me directly. They won't call me. It's so weird. That's but, a very coward move on people's yeah, part. It's trolls, though. That's that's what they. Plus, again, you're not you're not hating me. You're hating the the what is it? Don't hate the player, hate the game. Yeah. Um. You you why you don't hate me? You hate the idea of flat Earth, and so even if you la you could come at me and blow up my house, and what's that going to do? It's not going to stop flat Earth. So. Does is it like often that you get people just coming at you about the this topic? Like just being you mean in a like hospital? somewhat like like rude, not being like not being open minded, just being a, an ass, you know? No, no, hardly, hardly at all. I mean, in the comment section, yes, but but I don't read the comment sections for the most part. Uh, I, I tell people, I go, if you care about your self esteem, if you're in social media and you care about your self esteem at all, do not read the comment section. Yeah, because <laughs> it is, it is. I mean, it is. I remember when the first forums came out twenty something years ago. And I you, I, you could tell because there's no inter, internet registration system. You can be anonymous, right? Mm -hmm. And you could almost hear young men cracking their knuckles warming up for this, <laughs> which was, it's like, wait, 
I can say anything I want and there's no repercussions at all. And it's like, no, there's not. And it's like, oh, I've got a painful childhood and I'm just going to let it all out on, on, on these people. You could make, seriously, you go into YouTube, you could make um, a video of uh, kittens and puppies playing in a children's cancer ward, right? And within a hundred likes, thumbs up, you're going to have, it almost never goes a hundred to zero. You're going to have some guy just come in there just because it's zero and say, yeah, you know what? <laughs> screw you. Screw this video. Screw your religion, your sexuality. I hate you and everything about you just because I can. Yeah, that's what the, the internet tends to just. Oh, yeah. It's awful. I've only, I've only gotten one death threat. One. Oh, wow. And. Oh. Well, yeah, but that was they not. They threatened to throw you off the edge? No, 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 no. That's <laughs> funny. No, they, they threatened to, the guy, the guy threatened to stab me with a 24 centimeter knife. That's now, way too specific to be comfortable. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, well, plus, plus it also gives it away. It's like, okay, he's either Canadian or he's from Europe, right? Oh, because yeah. we, don't, we don't do that. Centimeters. Yeah, yeah, you're right. right. We don't give a shit about yeah, centimeters. Centimeter shit doesn't work here. So <laughs> yeah, I had to outsized blade. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I, I had to convert it. So I wrote him back and I and I and I thought it was hilarious enough because it's like, well, you're obviously so far away, you're never gonna get within knife range of me. So um I so I, I read this on air during a couple podcasts and he actually listened and he writes back and he and he goes, Death threat apology. And that was the title of the email. <laughs> <laughs> I go, oh, wow. I go well, well, right as long as you're as long as you're being public about it he goes he goes i'm sorry he goes i was hitting the glass when i wrote that <laughs> and i go and i don't hitting know much glass. about drugs oh fuck i know i know and i about. and i oh, thought right. it was i thought it was crack right and i go <laughs> and i saw so i read this on the air and i go <laughs> well he, he had an excuse he was on crack and then he writes back again the next week and he calls Death threat apology with corrections. I thought you were about to say death threat apology rescinded, and I was like, oh, oh, God. God, dude, I love that. I love so, that. And he goes, he goes, hitting the glass is meth. He goes, I was on a six day meth bender when I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't. I say, had I, I? I didn't watch any of Breaking Bad until this year, so I didn't know any anything about meth now i know everything about meth oh dude if you want to know more about meth you should come to our hometown <laughs> <laughs> oh god don't you throw that name out there that place doesn't need that kind of publicity you piece of shit <laughs> um so, anyway sorry we're off so track did, of it yeah so um i had a question did he say what the de he didn't it was just kind of a random message or was oh, no, no, yeah he was just he was literally high on meth and just decided to you. throw that out at me. Well, it's like, somebody it was like, it's like, if you don't stop this, I'm going to stab you with a 24 centimeter knife. And and then he, when he calmed down, when he when he came home, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> after sure. after a long hibernation, he woke up, <laughs> came to, and he was just like, you know what? I don't even own a knife that big. I apologize. <laughs> How, it's going to take me so long to find a knife with the proper dimensions to carry out this murder. <laughs> he, and no, I, he, I may be a meth head, but I'm not a liar. I yeah, he probably, <laughs> he probably pawned the knife for more meth. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but... But yeah, no, that I mean, but, but imagine that though, seven years, and that was the only, um, that was the only real hostility I ever got. And I did meetups in, oh God, I don't even know how many countries and, and went everywhere and talked to people. And we did hundreds of regional meetups. I didn't go to all those, but never, never once was anyone really mean to me, uh, or, you know, or, or really out of their way. Again, why, why would you come at me? It's, it, you're yeah. not mad at me. You're mad at the the whole concept if you're going to be mad at anything. So no, it's been it's actually worked out pretty well, which is why our retention rate is so high. I mean, when you get into this, we have a 99% retention rate. It's a red pill, blue pill thing where once you're in, you're in because you were the one that tore down the model yourself. I'm again, I'm not going to convince you. I'm not going to persuade you. I'm just going to say, oh yeah, by the way, here's what I think it is. Do your own research. And if you do, you're the one that, that breaks the globe. So when you break it, kind of like the Matrix, how would you put it back together? And you can't. 
So you're you just kind of got to live with it at that point. You get it's kind of like a marble in a paint can. You gotta gotta deal with it. So, so uh, spe- speaking of Matrix, because I I keep getting this uh, this whole simulation type vibe. I'm a little confused on like. Uh, so let's say, could you possibly, if you don't believe in like space, everything's like a projection. Yeah. Can you break out through the projection? Like, what's out there? Well, uh, you then that, then it goes. Th- there's two different ways you could look at this. Um, and I, by the way, I am a big Matrix believer. I am a, a total uh, vir- the the whole virtual system thing. Yo, yeah. This oh, whole dude, place. I love every movie about that. Yeah, we did an episode on that, out. actually. Too. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. This place screams uh, virtual. I mean, I, I said, look, if it's if it's flat and it's enclosed, it's probably digital. Because why wouldn't it be? Because that's we – the techniques we used – because I was, I was a video game producer for a number of years. If we oh, – wow. Yeah, yeah. I used to I, – I started out playing video games for a living back in the day. You know, I was one of the early people that was hired. Not not like all those people that, you know, do all those weird tournaments, you know, those team things. I was actually hired to play video games, like sit in an office and actually work for a living. And but the, but all the Let's games we've been building since since day one, uh, the 3D games anyway, are built with a flat model in, in mind. It's it's completely flat. It doesn't matter whether it's Minecraft or it's GTA or Warcraft or, or any of that stuff. Yeah, they drop it on a uh, on like a grid plane, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, of course, yeah. there's hills and valleys and stuff like that, but the the edges line up on both sides. In fact, the the sky, uh, there's something uh, that we use something called the the skybox system, which is you know everything. Computers are funny. You know, we we create spheres and and stuff, and we make things look curved, but computers can't draw true curves. A computer can't draw a globe. It can only draw a pixelated version of it, but it makes the pixels so small you'd never be able to detect it. That's why, you know, like your television, all the pixels are squares, right? They're, they're is, never circles. Is that what kind of helped you, like, uh, transition into believing? Oh, yeah, fire? yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the average person does not get – you guys get it. I mean, the average person, they, they watch The Matrix, which is now 22 years old or something like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, and then like the 13th floor, which is even a better movie in my opinion because of the concept involved, which was – because that was based on a German movie from the 70s called um, World on a Wire. Imagine the Germans trying to make a virtual movie, you know, a Matrix movie in the 70s. How do you even the, – the public has no concept of that. And then um, – and that was based on a, um, a 60s book called Simulacron 3, I believe. Which was again science fiction people even before the computers were in your average households they understood it's like oh yeah if you can imagine it it's probably already happened. However, the average person doesn't understand the matrix, so that I had to boil it down to the the bare bare bones, which was okay. Well, it starts out with being flat. That's that's it. I mean, you know, and then put a dome over it, and then maybe if you're comfortable with that, eventually start thinking that it's virtual. You know, look up things like the, you know, the original double slit experiment or the um, uh, neuroscience versus free will experiment. Uh, the, they all, you know, point towards the same thing. The the double slit experiment, by the way, the, the boiled down version of that is something you've heard in school, which was if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, now we know, you know, as we're building simulations, it's like, no, of course not. There is no tree. The tree's not there unless you're there to see it. We don't even render the tree until you show up because what's the point? In fact, when you're, um, there's something out there called um, uh, flashlight graphics, which is when you're looking, you, any game you play, whenever you're looking in front of you in like a cone pattern in front of you, that is rendered absolutely perfectly as, as well as it's going to. But everything behind you is just blobs. It's just pixelated. Why? Because why would we render it behind you? You're not looking behind you. Yeah, but if you spin around, well, if you spin around, yeah, sure, we render that. But to save resources, we only render the stuff in front of you. That is, okay, This is, it's interesting, like, talking about this, too, because it seems like a lot of theories, like, put together, like, rather than just, like, the physics or the dimensions of the Earth itself, it seems like there's a lot of other things that are are sort of put together. I don't really want to use the word conflated, but like things that are put together uh, that create like the entire flat earth understanding. And uh, 
That's pretty interesting. I, I hadn't like uh, really considered that perspective before. Yep. That there was like so much more to it other than you know just the actual shape of the Earth, which it's mm -hmm. it's it's honestly even harder to get into the idea with there being this much more on top of it. Yeah, well, which is why most of the community does not really even delve into the virtual side. Um, they they really go after instead of saying. So that's small. That's like factional then within Flat Earth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with okay. most, most of the Flat Earth community spends its time tearing down the globe. So they don't even go into like, okay, this world could be a virtual construct and, and start going into the matrix aspects of that. Instead, they will say, okay, here's what mainstream science says is our world. You know, this globe flying through space, you know, the residue of the Big Bang Theory and NASA. And I mean, we've got entire you know, battalions of people that all they do is tear apart NASA uh, on a regular basis. And which is, which is actually a good place to go off because ev nobody goes into flat earth loving it right away. Everybody hates it, including me. Everybody goes in. It's like, uh, reluctantly, it's like, Oh, I really don't want to look at this. Do you wish oh. it was round? I, I, dude, I used, to, I used to, not only did my, my walls where they covered with world maps, I used to collect antique globes. I, the, the globe icon was absolutely burned into my They're brain. They're cool looking. I like globes. Yeah, to be I'm honest, hey, you I start, like. You, you sorry, start, oh yeah, you start. Yeah, like you were saying, you start out seeing a spinning little globe, and as a kid, you're like, "That's the coolest thing in the world." And I remember as a kid, multiple times spinning a globe and sticking my finger on it, see where it lands. So yeah. I mean, I I can get where you're coming from with that like aspect, like that subliminal yeah. messaging at its finest. Yeah. Oh, dude, you there? You wait. If you if you spend any time, next time you watch a television show, see if you can make yourself aware of it. Every show, really, since the the Apollo program. You know, ever since you know, the late 60s, early 70s, you wait, you will find a, if it's not a space related show, you will find a globe in frame in regular parts of the show. You know, it, so it, especially television shows. It's like, yeah, okay, fine. I, I get it. There's a globe in a classroom if it's a, if it's a show you know, where, there's, where it's a classroom, right? But why is there a globe on top of that detective's office in Chicago? What you know on top of that filing cabinet? Why is there a globe in that doctor's office? Why is there a globe? Keep reminding and, you. And, well, yeah, and you don't you don't even pay attention to it. But if you're in our community, uh, because you're talking, you're seeing these two people talking, you know, in the frame, and you can see the globe behind them, and it's like, oh my god, it's perfect. That's what you know, you because you want to remind people when they're not in school, you want to remind them. It's like globe, 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 because you're in space. And it's a it's a subtle reinforcement technique, and, and it's brilliant. But I'm hyper aware of it now. Every show, I mean, I'm just I'm staring at it, waiting. It's like, yep, there it is, ep season two, episode three. It's now introduced, and and sometimes you get lucky, and sometimes you don't. Um, it sounds like a weird conspiracy, but think about that. If you know anything about Hollywood um, producers, you can walk into and you if you wanted to, you could walk into any Hollywood production office and say, hey, I would like to donate. Twenty thousand dollars to your TV show and or movie, and they they look at you and they say, okay, what do you want for that? You want you want a on screen credit? And what do you want? It's like no, I want to help set design this room right here, this one little room, and and they'd be like, okay, we'll take your money, and they will. And then, so you you know, you work with a set design person, and you know, you make a couple things, and all, I can't I can't imagine anyone ever objecting to putting a globe. And then they might say, well, you know, can you make it a different color, make it smaller, or you know, put it off here. But they'll take your money, and and if it works, if the show's a, you know, if the show's a bust, well, then you only got one season out of it. But if it runs for seven, eight seasons, that's the best twenty thousand dollars you could have spent, because once it's in there, it's in there, it's permanently part of that set. So it's good. Mm -hmm. I got yeah. it. Um, through through the oh, sorry. Did you have a question, Matt? Uh, Joe, but <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck again. Uh, for, um, if you didn't know, the other guy that's supposed to be here is my brother, and he's not on. I meant here. to say we Mike actually. All the time. Oh, <laughs> Mike. Okay. I was well, going to point yeah. out just like something that you wouldn't expect a globe to be in. The opening credits of Game Game of Thrones. Right. It starts out with a globe. Right. It's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the with the, with yeah. the sun around it and stuff. Well, their world is round. Yeah, it's fantasy. <laughs> well, that that's just it. You know, when I, I was a big Warcraft fan, and for the first uh, four or five years, it was always just this flat map, right? 
And then I noticed, I'm not kidding you, in some of the smaller par- smaller rooms, they had these globes. You know, these virtual globes that were spinning where they had taken the Warcraft map and wrapped it around. Uh, the, you know, some some little globe. It's like, wow, well, I get it. Again, it's a subtle reinforcement. But think about this. Every story, every space story you run into, whether it be, oh, look, here's another near-Earth asteroid every month, it seems, or every other month. Uh, you know, something funny on Mars. There's something weird on the top of Saturn. Oh, Jupiter's spot looks funny. We're going to reclassify Pluto and goes on and on. They don't even care if you read the article. All they want you to do is glance at the headline because if you glance on the headline, it's like, oh, right, Jupiter, because you're on a globe. Saturn, because you're on a globe. So on and so on and so on. It's, uh, you know, just reinforcing space because they, you know, they don't know what to do with the Apollo program. Mars, that's never going to happen. And Elon, don't even get me started on him. I could spend an entire (laughs) hour just on that guy. That roadster in space was ridiculous. Utter, (laughs) utter ridiculous. (laughs) <laughs> Things thing should have broken up into a million pieces. The 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 elements should have shattered everything in that car, and well, it was can't, pristine. They, they, you can't you can't break one of those cars. You remember how he couldn't even break the uh, the window when he hit it with a bat. <laughs> Right. Right. <laughs> right. right. You saw that right where he broke his own window. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. No. No. Sure Elon, Elon is a corp- Elon's a corporate tool. I don't know at what point they decided to try to turn him into Tony Stark, <laughs> I, but they did. I mean, and and I get it. Yeah, he had a bit. He had a cameo if he gets part. The suit, dude. If he gets the suit, it's like, what else can we do, man? There's no hope for us. Well, he, he was. He, you know, he had a cameo in Iron Man too. Mm-hmm. You know, just brief when they were on the French Riviera. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, right uh, the but no, he's just. Oh, I, I dedicated an entire chapter to him uh, in my in my book, and it was like. I just, oh, it just drives me insane. Mostly because when he came out and he said, back in 2017, he said, we're going to put, I'm going to send two tourists around the moon in 2018. He just, just throws out these absurd comments. It's like, what are you talking about? You don't have a rocket. You don't have a capsule. You don't have a crew. And you're just going to throw that out there? You're going to say, oh, yeah, I'm gonna, we're going to send people around the moon. Never happened. Never even started. But that's just what, that's what put him on my radar. I was like, ugh. So. Um, so you said earlier that you, you were a collector of antique globes. Yeah. Um, and then earlier on, you were saying like how learning about this is the, the equivalent of learning that you're adopted like when you're 30 years old, like an existential crisis. Did that happen to you? Yeah. Yeah, it oh. did. Um, when you were when adopted? I... But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I called up my parents and were screaming on the phone. No, no, no. What happened was I, after nine months, I had this weird moment. It was really a Jerry Maguire moment, if you remember the Tom Cruise movie, where I woke up in the middle of the night and I realized that the scales had tipped. And it's like, you know what? I think it's actually easier to try to 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 prove the the flat side of things, you know, that we're living in some sort of snow globe. And I woke up literally at 3 30 in the morning, got on my computer, and started typing, you know, some of the clearest writing I've ever done, where you know, I paragraph after, after paragraph. I remember taking a shower before I before I even got on my computer, and I could hear the narrative in my head. Before I, in my own voice, where it was like, oh yeah, this is what, how I'm going to start it. And this is when I'm going to go on. And I sat down and, and after I typed, it was kind of like Forrest Gump. After I typed it, it's like, well, might as well narrate it. Cause I grabbed a cheap mic and I, I narrated it. And it's like, well, might as well turn it into a video with some slideshows, you know, even though I knew nothing about video editing and put it together. And that was my, that was the, the first clue. And then I made another one the next day, another, you know, then I did the first six clues in seven days. And it was this weird purging. And when I was done, I was kind of like holding my breath, you know, waiting for the other shoe to drop. Because I was like, oh man, I'm just going to get roasted for this. People are just going to rip me to shreds. And they didn't. And uh, in fact, again, the opposite They're to where now, uh, you know, it, the trolls are almost non-existent. We, we, I mean, yeah, I mean... There's some dedicated troll channels out there, but that that happens with just about every topic. Oh, yeah. So well, it's like yeah. atheist. Uh, is there? 
to religion. You, you hate a religion so bad it almost becomes a religion. So right. You, you hate a conspiracy so bad that you create a conspiracy yourself. I don't right, know. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything on the bottom of the, like, the flat earth? Is there anything underneath us? That's a good question because the the but also what, can I add like what what would the depth be like like you well, know the, the, it's pretty much the so, same the answer is the the okay. the answer to that is uh, the answer to both questions which is the deepest hole ever drilled you would you would wonder about this right because you we've all seen the cross sections of the globe over the years you know the with the perfect thousand mile thick red and orange and yellow and white bands you know going all the way 4,000 miles down right to the center of the earth the deepest hole ever drilled what do we think it'd be half that 2,000 miles 1,000 miles 100 miles 10 two no it's it's not even not even eight miles but you're the by the one of one of the first people that said two miles no no anybody can <laughs> dig two miles but, but no one can go past day. um eight miles it can, oh, wow. it can, it's never been done. The, the Germans and the Russians tried for years and years trying to, to, to get past it and they couldn't. So how deep is it? I don't know. Tell me. I mean, we, we can't punch down fat, you know, past it, which made me look up, you know, the wiki entry. It's like, okay, what does the core of the earth look like? And if you read the wiki fine print, the scientists say, oh yeah, we have no idea what's going on down there. We're just extrapolating from volcanoes. It's like, then why don't you say that somewhere, you know, at some point, when you have the cross section of the earth, you took out that disclaimer. And so people just said, oh, well, obviously scientists have figured it out. People in lab coats are, are more intelligent than us. So they must be right. So we have no idea what's down there because science doesn't have any idea. Fucking lava, man. Fucking lava. Why is there lava down there? <laughs> That's also a good question. I, I think it's part like, of the so, so seismic activity is definitely an interesting thing too, because like being in a a, a flat plane. Do you have any uh, Do you have anything to, to to say maybe about like uh, earthquakes and formation of mountains and things like that? You know that that would occur because of seismic activity. Part of part of the process. Te tectonic plates wouldn't really work much differently on a on a flat model than it would on a globe. As a matter of fact, if, remember if everything's artificial then everything's there for a reason. And what your earlier thing, lava, that's a, actually a wonderful way to stop people from, from going down. I mean, yeah, lots, nobody, <laughs> owns, nobody owns flying cars, but everybody owns shovels. And if you told people that, hey, you know, if you dig far enough down, you might find treasure or something weird, people would be digging a lot. So you put lava and whatever it is, eight miles down, and no the one goes The first barrier is stone the second barrier <laughs> is water the third barrier is magma <laughs> the, uh, the or, or or like the antarctic which i which i love which is the antarctic is a fantastic and a bunch natural of fossils to distract you as yes you, as you there you go. also all sorts of fun stuff the engineering of this place is very well done in terms of Subtle negative reinforcements, making meaning you turn back. Uh, it makes you think. Make makes you think that you're when you turn back, it's because of a decision that you made. So, like Antarctica, you know, if you're heading out there, like back in the day, right? You, eventually, the water gets cold enough. There's icebergs that'll usually turn around most boats. But then, when you get there, you know, it's it's a Game of Thrones wall of ice, the the shoreline, a couple hundred feet high around, and then it just goes up and up and up. The, the most the content, continent, even uh, by mainstream, says it's like at 14,000 feet. There's no animal life. There's no plant life. I don't count the penguins. And it's, you eventually, <laughs> you, you don't want to go any further. It's like, screw this. I'm turning around. I'm, I'm not going any further. You know, it doesn't take frost giants to turn you around. It's standing in front of a big sign that says, go away. All it is is just subtle negative reinforcements. It's really cold and it's really unpleasant. So, so, so uh, with that, um, so like the whole flat Earth thing with the uh, the sun, how does that work? Like, oh, I, right, 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 right. Okay, so like a planetarium, the only thing different from a planetarium, the moon, the moon and the sun are very, very small, and they're very, very close by comparison. So the moon isn't two hundred and thirty. Well, let's round up two hundred forty thousand miles away, and the the sun isn't ninety three million miles away. They're both, and, and one isn't, by the way, I always think it's interesting, the moon fits perfectly in front of the sun because it's 400 times smaller and 400 times closer 
if you believe in mainstream science. But we say no, they're about the same size and uh, you know less than 50 miles wide, and the the, the sun is just a, basically an incandescent light bulb, you know, spotlight that that goes around, which is why you know you can get time zones because it's so damn close that uh, it's not shining on everything. And the moon is an LED nightlight, which is a whole nother thing, by the way. If you ever want to have some fun, look up uh, the fact that the moon is generating a cold light. And I didn't come up with this. Somebody said, hey, dude, if you take like a like an infrared point and click thermometer, you, you know, you buy it 20 bucks now at the hardware store. He goes, it's warmer in the moonshade than it is in the moonlight. And I go, what? I go, is that, that doesn't even make sense. It's like, no, it does. Because the, the moon is basically self-illuminated. It's generating its own cold light up to like 13 degrees Fahrenheit difference. And if you magnify moonlight, it even gets colder. And this is not secret technology. We can do this right now. You can go to Amazon and buy cold laser light health and beauty products all day long. The question is, why is the moon generating that? And if that's the case, does, does that mean, does that prove, you know, that we're living in a snow globe? No, but it completely destroys the relationship between the sun and the moon. Because remember, the moon's only lit up because of the sun, right? If, so if the sun, if the moon is reflecting at least a fraction of the, of the sun's radiation, it should at least be in the positive. It should never be negative. So... I know, that's a whole nother rabbit hole. Well, I, I got yeah, some that's, stuff to that's interesting. <laughs> My, there's, my, and there's, there's guys with predator vision that have, have filmed wonderful videos. Guys who are not into flat earth, you know, with predator vision going, holy, <laughs> walking around their neighborhood during a full, full moonlit night. I just picture a predator just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the suburbs. <laughs> walking around. Is this your cat? <laughs> Is this your cat? Dude, yeah, that's interesting. Like, I I don't know anything about like cold light or anything, but my understanding was that the the reason that like thermal energy wouldn't be given off by the light coming from the moon is because it absorbs. I mean, it it obviously has like a really high albedo because it's like pure white. If it is indeed a physical object, mm. and uh, when the sun's light hits it, it absorbs the thermal energy, like the long form radiation, and then would reflect only you know things like probably even lesser than you. Uh, then what the fuck is it called? UV. Yeah. Sure. Effect. No, no, I'm, I'm right there with you. Any heat I'm, I'm right yeah. there with you, but it shouldn't go negative. Not, not like that. I'll Meaning, look at that. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, there's some wonderful okay. videos out there on it where, um, uh, I mean, friends of mine that, you know, I mean, they went all out, you know, with, with um, jewelers, jewelers arms and, and copper strips and water. It's like, this one's in the shade. This one's in the moonlight. This one's being magnified. And it's just fascinating stuff. Uh, again, I, I have never run into a scientist that even would be willing to address it when I brought it up. It's like, it's like, what do you think of this? And they didn't even heard of it before. And it's like, all right. So. I can't oh, wait so, uh, through, I really can't. <laughs> <laughs> through your, uh, through your, like, journey of, like, studying these things, were you, were you interested or, or were you, uh, like, studied in slash interested in things such as, like, you know, chemistry and physics? Or did you end up, like, learning a lot more about those things as you were going through this process? Um, I was always a pretty good student. I, I, I really did enjoy chemistry when I was in, in university. In fact, I was thrown out for manufacturing explosives on campus. Whole other story <laughs> for another time. <laughs> oh, oh, you gotta take chemistry. Uh, you gotta not, oh, you not, gotta tell us about that. Not a Ted Kaczynski thing, but but more of a um, Native American fireworks, you know, place where they they were always in search of product around here, and uh, and I was more than willing to help out. But um, but you're absolutely right. When we, in fact, it's not just me. Anybody that gets into this, we have to relearn science that we just took for granted. So that some of that stuff I was throwing out. I mean, you could ask the average person on the street. It's like, how far is the moon away? How far is the sun away? How fast are we spinning? How fast is it going around the Earth or around the sun? How fast is the solar system flying sideways? I don't know the answers to all that stuff. But I had to relearn it. And and the reason I had to relearn it because we. In order to go after the whole aspect of space, you have to know, you know, know thy enemy. You have to know as much as you can before you can tear it down. And so, yeah, I, I know more. I know more, I've learned more science factoids in the last seven years than uh, all my schooling combined. 
And I'm sure I heard it at one point, which is zoned out, you know, in school, wasn't paying any attention, but now I, I, I couldn't forget it if I tried. Oh yeah. yeah school was, uh, has really found the most efficient way to make learning suck. Yeah. High school. <laughs> Coll colleges <laughs> seem to put a spin on it. I've, I've been, I've had a couple of, uh, classes at community college that, you know, kind of made it more interesting with things. Mm -hmm. Um, I had another question, uh, yeah. So you had to relearn all these science things. What's your um, uh, what's your opinion on like global warming? Is there like a different thing when it comes to uh, flat earthers? Do they believe the same like stuff? Well, I uh, uh, okay. Like I've got I've got a different opinion than most in our. Oh community. yeah, I guess that global isn't the right uh, word. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not that. People will say, "Does climate change work?" In fact, I've got, I've literally had this question thrown at me since year one which is, you know, how does climate change work in a flat earth? Do you believe in it? Because a lot of conspiracy people will call them truth or community. A lot of people in the truth community do not believe in the climate change thing. They just, they just don't buy it. Yeah. But for me, I buy it because it makes more sense in, uh, in, a, in an enclosed system. Meaning, doesn't the whole term greenhouse gases make more sense if that's it's an act? Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say. If you're in actually literally in like a fucking greenhouse. Like, exactly. Yeah, that would make more sense. I was just curious about that. <laughs> as soon well, as you bringing up this. I, I don't know if this is a theory, too. I was just thinking of it just as he was talking, too. Not just greenhouse gases, but if this is uh, simulated uh, and it's run like a computer, yeah, older stuff will heat up over time. It'll sure. not run as efficiently or whatever. I don't know. Sure. I mean, <laughs> if if this is an automated system, by the way, let's say it's even let's say it's virtual, but the but it's but you know even in virtual systems, there's automated processes. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is some sort of triggers or thresholds involved to where again, if you got uh, let's say 600, 800 million internal combustion engines running at a given point, but basically they're just furnaces. It's gonna yeah. have an effect on something. You know, you can't tell me it's not going to. Again, but only if it's an enclosed system. If it was just venting off into space, oh, sure. You'd be running anything, um, no problem there. But then again, the venting off to space is a problem if you're on a globe. Because, and let me throw this out real quick because it's one of my favorite things, which is gravity versus the vacuum of space. So again, if you're sitting in a room right now and the second floor above you, you turn into a little vacuum chamber, Right. If you and you have a valve, you pop that valve, what's going to happen? It's not like the movies, right? It's 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 instant. It's violent. It's not like, you know, you don't hear this. It's like, oh, my God, we only have two minutes of air left. It is incredibly fast, right? Fraction of a second. Yeah, it's instantaneous. You, you see, whatever, like, when they quick release stuff that they put in a vacuum, whether it's marshmallows or whatever, oh, yeah. experiments, yeah. that you look at on YouTube, that shit, boof. boof. We oh did, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did, we did an interesting experiment too, where like we put a fly into a vacuum, sucked out the air immediately. Then, then you see the fly like flapping its wings. There's no air for it to carry itself, so the fly can't about, move. You talking about junior high? Yep. <laughs> yep. yep. Same class as you, buddy. Same class. <laughs> so, the, so the question is, when when you did this, right? So the air went, you know, left your room and went upstairs, right? You walk outside. Why is our atmosphere still here? Being that our atmosphere borders the biggest vacuum chamber of all time. And your initial reaction, your only reaction would be, well, because of gravity. And I go, you mean the same gravity that couldn't keep the air in your living room from going upstairs? That very same gravity? And again, I throw the, the question out to scientists. I go, what happens when our atmosphere ends and space begins? Tell me what happens there. Tell me what, what you know... Is this this wispy relationship? No, that's not what a vacuum does. A vacuum does not give a shit. It will rip everything off. It will rip off the, the upper atmosphere, the clouds, the water. It takes it all. It will. That it will is, try to. So that's pretty interesting. Yeah, because like I know, if, I know for one thing, there there are things like, uh, um, like like H two O, like water vapor. Uh, sure. It's like a polar molecule. So if it's around a bunch of other uh, polar molecules that are in the air, which I mean, there are also noble gases and there's like nit uh, dinitrogen that are all in the uh, the atmosphere. And those are nonpolar. Yeah. But uh, 
like I know with the interaction of like polar molecules that they can hold each other together. So I imagine that there could be some sort of uh, connection between like gravity pulling down like these massive concentrated molecules and then observe and them also exerting forces upon one another to remain in space. But it mm -hmm. is an interesting point that you raise. <laughs> well, I, again, we we are conditioned to be again part of it. I don't think that's deliberate. I think it, that is just part of the science fiction process, which is Mark Twain's quote, which I which I love so much, which is never let the truth get in the way of a good story, which is if we, we sacrifice a lot in our storytelling. We, we will bypass. You've, you've seen it. Some movies get away with it. Some don't. So like the end of um, uh, uh, Aliens, for example, where Sigourney Weaver is venting space. Right, you know the big oh, bay yeah. door, and everything's so flying cool. past her, and she's crawling up the ladder against this. I'm going, <laughs> she's dead. The girl's dead. The marine's dead. The alien's dead. They're all dead <laughs> instantly. Yeah, know. yeah. But 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 because we've seen that so many times, it's just burned into our head. And you don't think, by the way, that there are accidents. You know, like when uh, Stanley Kubrick made uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey. He made that in 1968 won a bunch of awards it was a very you know very expensive very well done movie and then in 1969 that's when we landed on the moon subconsciously we already filled in the gaps with the movie everybody saw that freaking movie it was brilliant you could watch if you put it on blu-ray today it, it's held up amazingly well hmm. so, what else you got <clears throat> um <laughs> well earlier you were saying how you guys don't know who built the the simulation or the whatever we're in other theories sure like this 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 borderlines on 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 you know what what a lot of people call religion but you know well, yeah i mean you really there's only two 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 roads you can take there one is okay who built this place right it's either an yeah. older civilization that's more powerful than ourselves right or the divine but really, then you're kind of splitting hairs because you know yeah. one man's golden spaceship is another man's deity. I mean, yeah. if if a, if a giant if a giant spaceship landed in the middle of Indiana right now, you would have two camps that would show up. One would be all the science nerds be like, "Oh wow, they do look, do look like the blue people from Avatar," right? And you know that that's their thing. And the other, but another group would be like, "We must worship the blue people." You know, start building the church <laughs> yeah. immediately. And that's that's just, I mean, what's the difference between the two? Yeah. Um, do I think that this place was built by capital G God or did God subcontract out the work? I tend to go with the latter because, uh, you know, the, when we're talking about the ultimate, the ultimate power, because yeah. I... I believe that that whoever built this built this place would be just a fragment. Let's say small G versus capital G. Yeah. When, which I, is when like, I said religion, I, I wasn't saying capital G God. I just meant like a higher power kind of thing. Oh yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Not, not I mean, like God, but something uh, God-like, but not deity-ish. Yeah. Like a, a like you said earlier, this the previous you know civilization that is uh, you know smarter and all that. Oh yeah, and and by the way, I I also don't think that we're the first people. Not only do I think what's outside of here, are, are, is there more than one of these? Yeah, probably. Why would this be a one-off? But not only that, let's make it even. Let's put another layer into it, which is we're not the f first people to rent this apartment by any stretch, and you guys know that. I mean, come on, mm -hmm. how how many old civilization remnants are there? You know, sunken cities off of Japan, sunken cities off of India, Puma Punku, Machu Picchu. The Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, Bimini Road, blah blah. It just goes on and on and on. Because why would you why would you be a one-off civilization? You know, after every civilization has its run, whatever, you know, we're running on like five thousand years of unbroken history, then you know, you shake up the S etch a sketch and you start over. You know, and whoever, you know, does that mean that that part of this civilization gets to move on and do other things? Yeah, possibly. I don't know. But it it certainly feels to me that all the things that are flying around up there, and I've seen them. I mean, grab night vision binoculars and watch them anytime you want. They're they they're just older versions of us, but they seem they seem to have rules. There seem to be protocols put in place. I, I won't go so far as to say like it's the prime directive protocols, but it kind of feels like that because you know that's one of the old arguments, which is 
well, if there are spaceships flying around, why, why haven't they landed? Why haven't they come out and taken selfies and signed autographs? It's like, do you know what would happen? Yeah. <laughs> that would change everything. You know, you can't, you can't, there's, there are rules. You can't, it's seriously, um, let me, let me throw this one more thing, which is the, the greatest UFO sighting of all time. Most people don't even, never even heard of it. It's not Roswell. It's not Aurora in 1899, Texas. It's some um, 1561 Nuremberg, Germany. Look it up. It's a fantastic wiki page where these two huge factions just start duking it out over the um, uh, over the town of uh, Nuremberg, Germany, on a beautiful spring morning for like an hour, and then a third faction shows up, breaks them up, and then all three leave. In which it's like, okay, so who are the first two? Who was the third group? Was that the, was that the cops? Was that the UN? And also throws in, it's like, what sort of response time is an hour? I could fire a gun out this window. There's going to be cops here in five minutes. These guys are doing a full out military conflict and nobody steps in for an hour. It's amazing. That's, yeah. look up and, get, that. and they drew it. By the way, they drew it in the newspapers. They, an hour is so much time. They actually sketched out the entire thing because there was no cameras back in 1561. <laughs> it probably was. No. Uh, <laughs> how would uh how like how would everyone keep this a secret like throughout the different countries and stuff? Well, it's not like the Manhattan Project. You know the Manhattan Project where you have hundreds of thousands of people refining um, enriched radioactive material to try to make atomic weapons. This would be need to know so first off again the, the moves they made worked out for them they sealed off antarctica with the antarctic treaty uh, in 1959 and then uh, the same year they announced the van allen radiation belts and they formed nasa which is basically militarized space and then the rest you don't have to tell anybody i mean remember there's only five countries that supposedly have launch capabilities uh, Japan, China, Soviet Union, now Russia, America, and European Union. And at the highest levels, you just, those people, the only people, you can have space agencies, let's put it that way. But the only people that need to know, to, that need to know that a thing's going to be faked are, of course, the, the top brass and the telemetry guys. Which, which again, which I recommend Capricorn 1, the late 70s independent film. So much because that goes into not only how they faked a, uh, a moon mission, but how they faked a Mars mission. And it was a fictional movie. It wasn't like a documentary or anything. They just showed it like a matter of fact. It's like, oh, by the way, we're going to fake a Mars mission. Here's why. And so most people don't have to know. I mean, 99.9% .9 of NASA employees, they don't know anything. Even the astronauts nowadays. They don't even know anything. Just uh, they're, they're paid. You know, they're, they're high-ranking officers in the United States Air Force. Which is, you know, they, they know how to keep a secret. And plus, they're under different rules than most people. When, they, you know, when we break, break our secrets, you know, we, we hurt people's feelings. We're not, maybe, maybe not go to jail. When, if they do, you know, it's treason, which is a whole other thing. You know, they, they lock you in a room and throw away the room. And so they, they take that very seriously. So there you go. This question is probably out of nowhere, but uh, <laughs> I uh, we heard that um, like flat Earth people didn't believe in um, like uh, trees, like they were extinct. And then, oh like, no, 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 no! That was the I, um, I didn't know if the, that was an actual thing. <laughs> no, no, no! There was a video that came out. Wow, how far back was that? Twenty seventeen, um, called "No Forest on Flat Earth," which was one of our people. Uh, and I think he was, he was just definitely Eastern Bloc because his accent was really, really thick. Had ba was basically saying that lots of your mesas and mountains appeared to be just severed trees that were petrified. So if you can imagine like um, Devil's Tower out in Wyoming, for example, you know, where they shot, you know, parts of Close Encounters of the Third Kind. That movie, you know, imagine it, that does kind of look like a stump from a tree. Well, that's he was kind of going down that road and it resonated with a lot of people because there were if you're into flat earth or you are open to just about everything afterwards, you're revisiting everything because, again, you're into flat earth. What's crazy at that point? 
So again, people will come to me and, and say, you know, I pretty heard, I heard that Elvis is still alive and he's dating Bigfoot, you know, <laughs> seven, eight years ago, I'd be like, get the hell out of here. I don't want to talk about that now. I mean, like, well, right, I'll, I'll give you a couple of minutes. What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. Why would what what leg do I have to stand on? I can't come back in him. That's why in the, in the literally in the first paragraph of the first clue I, I wrote, I, I always I knew I was onto something because there were friends of mine that swore that the entire British royal family were made up of lizard people, right? But I would come at him and I would say, they are. well, oh, well maybe, Ikes maybe, but, but then I would come at these same people and I'd say, yeah, but what about Flat Earth? They go, get the hell out of here. And I was going, wait a minute. <laughs> you're out of your mind, man. I go, what? I go, you were just showing me lizard people. And yet you're just going to tell me I'm crazy. Yeah. And that, that shows you the, 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 uh, this is when I kind of knew there was something else going on here. I mean, the fact that when I f clicked on my very first Flat Earth video, I had this visceral response that uh that i was i mean i was embarrassed right i was in a closed room with the drapes pulled and i clicked on this flat earth video and i was flushed and it's like wait a minute <laughs> i have clicked on a lot of weird stuff on the internet over the years <laughs> nothing is really we all? yeah no, and nothing's <laughs> embarrassed me it'd be like yeah i probably shouldn't be here but nothing has been you know it'd be like shocked me and this was, and I was going, why is this? And I, and I started to realize it's like, oh, right. Because of the conditioning, because I've been told for so long that now all of a sudden you're going against that. You're, you're now, you're, you're going against your, you know, all those years of, of just beating it into you, you know, well, I shouldn't yeah. say beating. Just program, you know, yeah. program thinking. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Anything else? Uh, I can't think of anything. Casey's been kind of quiet this entire time, which is surprising. Yeah, you got another question over there, Casey? Casey's usually the guy that talks the most. Yeah. Have you ever Actually, no, uh, <laughs> any questions submitted by our listeners? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, um, and why yeah, don't you read uh, one of the questions sorry. submitted by Here's our listeners? Uh, so, uh, the NASA... So, NASA guards... So, there's... Are there NASA guards on the ice wall? No. That surrounds it? No, 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 no. no. NASA, NASA has nothing to do with, with it. Compartmentalizing over the last, well, since 1960 has been very, very good. So NASA does what NASA does. They just, they, they wear white, they don't carry guns, they smile for the camera, and they say space is amazing. Even though they are DOD the entire way. I love the fact that people say, well, the NASA isn't military. I go, what are you talking about? They're uniquely military. They were built, literally built on the still burning embers of the war Nazi war machine. You know, the, the V2 program, you know, with Werner von Braun. We took half the scientists and Soviet Union took the other half, right? So, no, NASA has nothing to do with the Guardian of Antarctica. Antarctica is sealed off by layers and layers of red tape uh known as the antarctic treaty by the way it's the only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties and treaties were meant to be broken that's one of the things we do and this one when it was signed in you know in 1959 they said uh yeah we're not even going to review it to to until 2041 can you imagine that i mean yeah we're close to 20 closer to 2041 now can you imagine that saying that in 1960 it's like everyone that had anything to do with that would be dead, long, long dead. And it's like, why? And not only, here's the other thing about the Antarctic Treaty. <clears throat> not only are you not, you know, you're not going to be able to, to, to break it. You're not even allowed to talk about it. That's one of the things that got me. I mean, this, run, this world is run on money and greed and power. Right? And, you know, and, and there's tons of natural resources down there. Our military announced it back in the 50s. And yet... Those same companies with huge amounts of liquid cash, the, the companies that could start fracking in your neighbor's backyard next week, right? They're not even allowed to talk about it. Not even, you know, they should be running full page ads in different newspapers. And and nope, there's a there's a national security blanket that's thrown over this entire thing. Not just our our nation, every nation. It's like British Petroleum. I am sure that the, that the highest levels, somebody's, you know, been sent a memo and says, by the way, you don't go down to Antarctica. If you think about Antarctica, you just call this number. We'll talk it, talk you through what you're not going to do. 
And every economic power that comes online is, is told to sign the treaty, which is just amazing to me. It's like, okay, I, I guess, you know, but because it's the least traveled destination in the world, it's, it's out of sight, out of mind. Nobody, nobody questions it. Who wants to go freeze their ass off, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and not only that, it's expensive. Like if you wanted to go down there to freeze your ass off, it costs you about 15 grand. And it's like, what are you getting for that? You're going to be in a raft, we, you know, with orange, you know, parkas, you, you know, really thick stuff. You'll have your picture taken with some penguins on the coast and that's it. You are not, you know, you think, oh, hey, can't I just get a snowmobile and just start taking off? Nope. You cannot. You, you have to file huge amounts of permits. And again, um, Antarctica is the only country in the world which, which isn't owned by anyone. I mean, every square inch of real estate in this world is owned by somebody except Antarctica. And it's monstrous. How, how does that happen? So. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Uh, yeah. You brought up the fracking thing. This is going to sound really stupid. But hmm. so let's say hypothetically you just kept drilling, like just kept drilling. What would right. you eventually meet? Like believing in flat earth. But there's not a core to the earth kind of thing. We we don't know. I mean, <clears throat> I can tell you that the drill bits just turn to slag when it reaches a certain level. I don't know if it's a pressure thing or it's a heat thing <clears throat> or both, but um, but we don't know. If it was me, if if I was you know, if you gave me unlimited funds and I had military technology, I wouldn't yeah. use a drill bit. I would do um, I would do um, grenades. I, yeah, close enough. I, you know, I, I would do tactical nukes, and I would just start punching, punching my way down because you know nukes will vaporize chunks of matter. Do it. So you know everything. But then you, again, you just need the you need the tech that that they had in the movie The Core, where they just they had that laser that just vaporizes uh, the mountains. I thank you, by the way, for for bringing up that Thomas Jane movie. I watched, I rewatched that the other. In fact, I think I think last year and. It is, you know, from it's hard to rewatch for me now because it's like, wow, the leaps that they had to make for that, you know, and and it was so far above the head of the average viewer anyway. So it's like, oh yeah, we stopped the core of the earth. And it's like, do you know the scope of what you're talking about? If that was the case? And and they were gonna restart it with nukes. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's that was Jesus Christ. Funny. Yeah, that's the most like, American <laughs> thing you could probably do. Well, we'll blow, blow, it blow it up more. That's what we do. <laughs> what is that? An on and, off and, switch? And, Fucking nuke it. And, <laughs> and turn the, it on. The, the metal that was used to make the ship, I think it was it was the first time before Avatar, but it was unobtainium. called un, unobtainium. <laughs> And <laughs> this is a geolo uh, this is a fucking geologist. He knows what he's talking about. We guys yeah. get a little bit of sub <laughs> on a yeah, <laughs> yeah. a mineral that defy which is basically indestructible and becomes even more indestructible under high heat and pressure. It's like, come on. It's like you guys I mean but, but again, you had to for the storyline, you had to write that into the plot. And it's like, all right, but yeah, it's that's a tough movie to watch now. <laughs> really really tough i i'm i'm fully fine with like journey to the center of the earth where you know there's subterranean civilizations that's fine because you don't need much room to pull that off but you know the whole actually going to the core no no <laughs> no nope. we're just gonna call it a nougat a nougat middle like a snickers bar oh <laughs> 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 Um, did you uh did you ever meet Mike uh Mike Hughes, the guy who launched himself up in that rocket? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He sued he was suing me before he died. Oh really? Yeah, he was a whole he had this weird thing where um he found a loophole in the California legal system to where he could apply for people's to use people's identities for things. And once he figured out this loophole, he was uh, doing it for all sorts of people. And I was one of them to where, I mean, I actually got a summons and, um, uh, I remember uh, it's fine now, you know, cause he's, he's, he's dead, but he, um, uh, the Santa Clara, Santa Clara, no San Bernardino police department. They had contacted me and they, um, they, they said they were working on it, trying to build a case up against them and they wanted to know if they could use me as a witness. And it's like, Oh yeah, yeah, sure. But, um, 
uh, on a side story that was the worst worst way ever. You would have thought San Bernardino Police Department. They sent me just this generic email, right, saying, "Oh, you know, we'd like to get a hold of you. We need your ID and some other stuff." And I, you know, I get so much spam. I write back these guys, and I go, "You guys are terrible." I get better emails from Nigerian princes, and you know, just go away, right? Get out of here. And then they write back, you know, another email. It's like, no, we're absolutely serious, blah, blah, blah. I was going, okay. And they caught me in a funny mood. And I said, okay, here's the deal. I'm so glad you guys wrote me because I've got a lot to get off my chest. And I just listed off all these major crimes that I had committed. <laughs> and at the end, and I go, and you will never find all the bodies I have buried. And, and then turns out that it was actually real. <laughs> <laughs> they got a hold of a friend of mine, and, <clears throat> Patricia, uh, from the documentary, and, and she goes, oh, my God. She goes, she goes, they're real. And I go, yeah. I go, why the hell would they just email? Why would they just call me? So, yeah, <laughs> stupid. At least they didn't, they, you know, I didn't get in trouble for it, but it was kind of funny. But, yeah, I did know Mike Hughes. And, and he, by the way, he was not in a flat earth. He was... Um, uh, he was just really just trying to get his stunt thing. You know, he was an aging stunt man. He was trying to, to to fund that, and so we gave him, you know, what is it, seven eight grand to 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 fund one of his rockets. And again, what what do you get for that eight grand? It's like, well, I'll put a big flatter sticker on the side if you don't mind. And so we did. You know, and you know, he put it on there, and that's when all the news people just latched onto him. In fact, he was supposed to be in the documentary, but the oh, producers. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They they were going to put him in, and but the producers smart move. They they said this just all of a sudden occurred to him. It's like what happens if he crashes and he dies? It's like it's like the the tone of this movie will completely change. I go yeah, and so they decide nope, we're not going to do it. We're going to need a couple extra forms. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I got I got with it. Well, and a lot of people don't know that that um, he had already signed a, a TV deal with the um, science science channel, not sci fi network, but the science channel, um, a reality show. And they were like shooting season one, episode one when he crashed. So kind of creepy. Not saying the Science Channel had anything to do with that since they paid for the rocket that he, <laughs> they had built, but uh, weirder things have happened. Huh. It's not is, there a, is there any, uh, like, uh, websites that the, we can, you can direct our listeners to to sure. check out the Flat Earth sure. and all that fun stuff? The, the easiest way, you know, I'm not even going to list websites. Just go in any search engine and type in Flat Earth Mark. That's it. And you will you will find that'll that'll lead you into some direction, and you will organically find your way to the rabbit hole that you are seeking. Um, the the stuff that's out there, I mean, yeah, I've got some books on Amazon. There's the documentary; it's out there, and and some other fun stuff. But uh, seriously, just type in Flat Earth Mark and and see where see where it takes you. I I don't know where it will take you. There's so many <laughs> like again like the wiki page that showed up. I didn't know who set that up. I wish I did, and they never contacted me. So, oh, yeah, there's so definitely secret admirer you can click on <laughs> that'll send you right down a rabbit hole. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> in a matrix speaking uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Again, I the there's there's plenty. I mean, there's a lot of content makers out there. Uh, don't what I don't recommend. Don't go into YouTube and just type in flat Earth. Because you will get just about every major channel has done a flat Earth video. I mean, everything from. I mean, yeah, you said PewDiePie, and I looked at that. Oh. Did not expect that. No, no. I went onto YouTube and looked at. It, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I mean, I mean, every, but like all the like every every network, every television talk show, yeah. every, everybody's done a flat Earth video at at one point or another, and so uh, you, the things can be lost in the shuffle. But there's there's a lot of good content out there if you if you know what to look for. So, you know, but but before I go, I must recommend to people because I'm not I'm not kidding you when I say this. If you wake up every morning and your life is just about the way you want it to, you know, thumbs up, everything is awesome. That whole song. And don't look at this because there is a point where you go down, this isn't like other rabbit holes, where if you go down this rabbit hole to a certain to a certain degree, you can't come back from it. And when that happens, it can be a little jarring 
because you, you again the whole adoption thing and and mm-hmm. you'll you'll be freaking out for a while you won't sleep and you'll be staring at the screen going oh well, man and <laughs> If that if that happens, you know, don't blame me. Uh, you know, some people have in the past. He told you not to. Yeah, I, I did. Warned I warned you. you. I go. I go again. It's the, sort of the Morpheus speech, which is <laughs> I'm only offering you the truth, <laughs> but you're the one that has to has to figure that out. You know, and go down the rabbit hole yourself. But it, if you want to just do what you want to do, hey, great. Don't look at it. That's not reverse psychology, by the way. That is just a fair warning. <laughs> go look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like it's like what yeah it, it, I know it's it, you know how that's gonna work right I say whatever you do do not think about elephants right oh, yeah the second you do that I got a I got a special defense strategy though because like as soon as I hear elephants I just think cheetahs what? <laughs> what's like that's that how I beat them that new that new movie that came out Terrifier too everybody's like people are puking and seizuring in the theater that's, don't watch it it's like you know it. we're gonna watch it now yeah <laughs> I, I was like wait what a minute can handle it for a movie that's messing people that's up a, that, that's, that's a different okay, thing then. though because with this they're actually I, I you know I really doubt people are really doing that maybe the puking part no, they seizuring unless they, have <laughs> they shit themselves immediately. Yeah. <laughs> a weird epilep- <laughs> epileptic fucking light thing sh- flashing. Well, yeah, everywhere. you could you could do that with just. You don't even need a movie to do that. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's a, this is strictly a, an advertisement thing rather than what we're talking about here. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 that's that's a little different. This this yeah. is this is a, again. This is just a. It's an idea that sits out there, but. Uh, it's it's for you to research and and not again. I'm I don't want to convince you. I want to be held responsible for it. It's I, I, I it's kind of like being like a flat earth flat earth drug deal, right? Dr- drug dealer. Like I'm standing on the corner. It's like, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> She's like, come on, man. I got the flapjacks. You're asking for. <laughs> no, 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 no. The kid the kid walks up to you and he's he's like, man, you you gotta hear that flat earth. It's like, dude, you couldn't handle flat earth. I'm not gonna yeah. give it to you. <laughs> come on, man. I could give it to you. <laughs> I could give it to you in doses, man. I'm not giving you the whole thing. <laughs> it's like, I'm, well, if we, I give this to you, I don't want you coming back at me later and telling me, why did you give it to me? And then on and then on it, you have your name and address at YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. Well, we really, we really appreciated you being on here. And as yeah, a friend, no, yes, it was my pleasure. It's an honor. Yes, this yeah, is I think our listeners guest. are really going to enjoy you're, this. You're a very nice guy. You're a very and, uh, pleasant guest, too. Yes, oh, thank cool. you. Thank you. And and I am glad. I, I hope that whoever you have next, you don't schedule them six months out. <laughs> 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 Just, oh, yes, Casey. We'll, we'll try to keep it as short of time frame next time. <laughs> oh, my God. What are you guys like? I'm your first guest. It's like, oh, yeah, we're going to schedule you six what's months the, from now. It's like, <laughs> what's the going time frame? <laughs> What are you doing uh, in half a year? Uh, industry knowledge. What are you doing in half a year if they don't a put couple up weeks, a couple weeks? Top couple weeks. Okay. A couple weeks because that because anything sense. after that people forget anyway. I mean, seriously, you book somebody like I mean, unless it's like a a, a huge show, you know, like a like a like a Tonight Show or something yeah. like that. We're definitely no Joe Rogan. <laughs> oh, don't even bring that man up to me. Oh, I, I am not. I'm not really a fan of Joe Rogan. Joe though. Rogan. Well, no, no. Okay, let me leave you with this. Has he you on? Joe Joe Rogan was one of one of ours back in the day. Well, we're gonna he end on Joe Rogan. Rogan. Okay. He was an anti <laughs> he was an anti NASA guy who would debate against scientists and and say there's no way we went to the moon. That was like one of his yeah. favorite quotes, right? And then all of a sudden he disappears for a while, and when he comes back. He has a brand new show on the Sci-Fi Channel called Joe Rogan Questions Everything. And the very first episode, he apologizes to NASA for everything he ever said about him. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> okay. Oh, man. <laughs> what, what, what parrot did you take? Yeah, NASA you know, dropped the fucking mouse trap on Joe. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> like, and, then, and then he becomes the most popular podcast in the world. It's like, okay, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> it's like a, I mean, of all the people that have the most popular podcast in the world, it's like that guy, really, Joe Rogan, <laughs> the guy every two seconds, like, 
wow, hey Jamie, yeah. look up this. <laughs> you know, oddly, I think uh, I think Eddie Bravo is also flat earther, isn't he? Oh yeah, yeah, he's the one that drives jo- Joe insane. Because, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> he's uh, he's oh he's yeah, he's hilarious he, too. I love him. <laughs> huge one of our uh, one of our guys, and he he Joe tortures him on a regular basis, and I think Joe <laughs> wants to talk about it because it's polarizing, so he'll bring it up to guests every t- chance he gets. It's like, you know, if he gets an opening, it's like, hey, what do you think about Flat Earth? And seeing if their guest loses it, you know, on, on camera. But I don't know. Eddie's absolutely one of our guys. In fact, he just did a um a conference speaking thing for ours. Uh, we did um a, a thing just a couple days ago. He was on it. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of fucking, okay, so six months, Mark, <laughs> say what you will. Say what you will about Mr. Sergeant. <laughs> But he keeps a fucking date, okay? You're very punctual, and you keep <laughs> you keep I a kept the date, here, sir. I kept the date out of morbid curiosity more than anything. It's like, it's like real, I'm, 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 real, I'm really curious to see. It's like six months, and then you guys, I you'd be like, oh yeah, here's the show. It's like what? How? How? I've never well, had. We start with we're very intoxicated conspiracy theorists. <laughs> so I mean, nothing I've, is really uh <laughs> I've had podcasts with like less than an hour's notice. Oh, and wow. it's like you again when you when you get somebody that email, it's like it's like, Oh yeah, we booked you out in like November. It's like what? <laughs> 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 So anyway, thank you. No, thank you guys. It was a, it was well, a real pleasure. Um, no, it was our pleasure. That if, was, yeah. If and, you and, are, if you need anything else, feel free to shoot me uh, emails and I, I can I can direct her. If there's anybody else, by the way, in the community you want to talk to, I'd be more than happy to introduce you. Uh, we'll else. invite you to the Conspiracy Out Party reunion in uh, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> That's so be ready. Okay, we'll I'm giving you two years notice this time. <laughs> Give me a two years notice this time. <laughs> nice. Um, nice. Well, anyway, guys, uh, thank you. And thank you. Uh, thank you. by the way, thank I you. don't have a button. Do I have a button that actually disconnects me? <laughs> Cut him <laughs> off, Casey. Uh, Cut him off. <laughs> no, I mean, there's no, there's no, there's no button that says leave. <laughs> oh, it's a, oh, I think you just, just usually. Like, I just yeah, close the browser. Yeah, close the browser. I'll exit you out. Okay. Anyway, thanks, guys. Send, send me the audio if if you get a chance. Oh yeah, yeah I'll we'll send it to you probably tomorrow morning. Okay, sounds good, guys. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thanks for yeah, your uh, coming, Mark. Yep. Have a good night. You know, we brought him on here to talk about flat Earth, but it turns out that like the theories that Mark Sargent is into is actually like a big conflation of a whole bunch yeah. of other conspiracy theories. It's actually not just about the uh, the physics and existence of a flat Earth. It's about like all kinds of things, like simulation theory. Um, it's disproving gravity and physics. Like, you know, it's a, it's a whole bunch of things all, Dude, all put I, together. I, I kind of want still to a lot of him. unknowns that he doesn't know either. Yeah. I kind of wanted to. Yeah. Cause it seems the flat earthers are more into disproving a global thing rather than, um, proving yeah. what's beyond what's beyond what they believe as earth. Yeah. They didn't yeah. really have a, uh, like, he didn't really have an answer for outside of earth. If you were to break out of it, like the Truman yeah. Show, or I said, Which I don't fair. think any, I mean, any of them do. Think, think about how you would answer that, though. If he's talking about yeah. if if the truth That's of what, existence yeah. in his ideology is that it is all a, clo- a closed system entirely, then like you wouldn't really have an answer for that, you know? Yeah. I really wanted to ask yeah. him because That's why I, I asked and about I didn't get a chance about it. To. But I, I think that's part to. of. That's part of him, like, nailing fucking, like, armor onto his argument, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, just having things yeah, that, and like, I wasn't if trying you to can't explain anything. the thing, then the thing is part of a different theory, like simulation theory. Like, so if I it's something that doesn't be, make uh, sense in the framework mm-hmm. of, like, regular reality or just flat Earth reality, then it's now in the reality of simulation theory. Well, I think I think we actually encountered something pretty interesting today. Because yes. like you know, all of us are not flat earthers, right? Yes. Yeah. No. So I mean, that's and that's fair to say. There's like there's no dissing happening there. Just saying yeah. we're not it, flat a, earthers, a, or you, or if you are, it's like yeah, <laughs> pop, like popularly, it is. I mean, you're gonna get fucking shitted on a little bit, but yeah. uh, I mean, mostly I, I don't care. He, Personally, I don't I was, care. Yeah. I yeah. Say, I, I even told it, Mark it before he came down. on uh, that I was like, none of us believe in this. Just uh, just yeah, to give it, you a heads it's, up. 
it's like, an interesting theory. He, it's he a was, bit. He was cool I, I think what we did here is going to evolutionize the way that the pod actually goes through from now on. Because yeah. before the the shitting on things, I think needs to change and just uh, the, the open mindedness. You don't even necessarily have to believe it, but not the shit on it. I just, think be that is just be yeah, disgusting. Just be disgusting to the thing. And I, uh, before those podcasts, I, I was actually one of the biggest um, contributors. Shitters. <laughs> You're a big shitter. Because I don't believe in most conspiracy things, but, and like big I said, like a dinosaur dude. I don't believe in the whole flat earth thing still, but it was interesting to hear all about it. So I think I should keep that open mind. Yeah. I, I think that should be as a whole in the podcast to keep an open mind to it. Yeah, and I, it's I, interesting I, how I think factional it is it. too. I didn't even know that that was going to yeah. be like a thing that came up. Oh, like yeah. knowing I that there we were are different hear factions. Some, um, I thought we were. Oh, hear I knew about dumb. that from the yeah. from yeah. the documentary. That's like a big thing in it because there's have the other faction in there who who in the documentary they made it really seem like very gang typey, like very territorial. Well, yeah, <laughs> where it's like it, did, like they wouldn't get, get along, but bit. they do get along, you know. Like in the documentary yeah. I watched, it made them seem like that. Like they're like, Ur. he did. The only time <laughs> one one point, what did he say? Um, well, we when he said our people believe or whatever, it, yeah. That mm-hmm. feeling gives me. I just don't trust things and unified things like that. Well, yeah. our people, this people, like it's very like tribal. It's almost like you're going to be blind to other ideas. But he wasn't like that. Like he yeah. was very open to other things and said, if you're not willing to do this, then don't look at that. And he was very open. He was very open. It wasn't like you need to believe in this. You need yeah. to whatever. That's what I thought when he came on. He was going to be this like weird dude and then right off the bat very and i get it people yeah like put, that, put us on put me at ease like instantly yeah well that's a very yeah. good speaker. because i was voice. nervous actually he has a yeah. very um he has a very easygoing voice and he's, he's done it a well lot spoken. Yeah. yeah he's very well spoken especially for an amateur podcast for ours <laughs> which i didn't think we were going to be able to keep up with yeah. no, he was a thought, solid fucking guest really <laughs> yeah, <he's laughs> like i want to have more true. guests now like yeah, we, we still yeah, joked around joke. how we joke around <laughs> and at that parts. Made me, yeah and we did but and, we and did he was laughing too and yeah we did it appropriately but, and i had to bite yeah. my tongue oh let's my god let's bring him on the fall of medenvard oh god let's bring him to our dnd table like casey had he listened to our pod before I, I don't know. And don't the, the reason why I was quiet, I was, it wasn't because I, I was just, like, sitting here. It's because all my questions he just kept answering or, like, he would just, like, because when he throw another theory in and then it would answer another question that I had, I'm like, ah, man. He's, he's it was funny because I was right now. I was like, I don't know how to. I don't know what to ask him now. I legit was going to yeah, ask you- about fracking and like <laughs> digging too deep. And then he brought up fracking and I was just yeah. like, holy shit. And I was just like, well, speaking of that, um, this may sound weird or stupid, <laughs> but if yeah. you dug far enough, like, what would you see? Is it like a fucking cartoon? You dig a hole in something to spy on something on the other side. See, going in, I wasn't because probably because I had seen the documentary. I wasn't too concerned on what it is. Uh, the the actual theory, although well, I did learn a lot from him, he... but I was I was wondering how someone gets into this because it's yeah. that, 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 that's I saw I... you picking at that, and that was actually interesting because that's a that's a that's a that's a side of the experience, and it's kind of exactly what I imagined. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it's well, he said nine we're, months, we're, and I had to bite my tongue because I was like, oh, so as long as it takes to make a baby, you're over here just fucking honing it birthing well it's like we are doing what it is about flat earth but we are interviewing mark Sargent, so i want to know more about how he got into this yeah Yeah. him as a person got into it some of the little things i was really curious about fucking environmentalist shit though like what everybody else like on a global scale if they believe all the global scale stuff but i didn't think about that until he said it it was like well think about a greenhouse effect and then i was just like yeah yeah that makes sense like a green yeah yeah, i wanted to talk to him more about like I wanted to talk to him more about like gravity and physics and stuff, but I felt this this thing that like uh, because of the way that he was like answering the questions and he was able to like uh, if he didn't have a good answer to something or well I'm not gonna say if he didn't have a good answer to something but if he didn't have an exact answer to something then he could yeah. then he started telling like cool stories and stuff that are like yeah, fun he, to listen he, to yeah, he'd skirt he'd into more interesting shit but I wanted to talk to him like more the about bomber like, shit. Yeah, I, I I would want to do a whole podcast on that. Yeah, because there's like, um, I mean, there there's like plants. They show what is called gravitropisms, 
which is like a response to gravity when all other stimuli is removed from a plant. Like, so basically the stalk knows to grow upright because it can sense gravity, even if it's like removed from all light, all like exchanging air current, like anything uh, dude, like that. That would have been a great, so, actually, that would have been a really good fucking question. I should have, I should have brought that up, but I just felt like I was going to get into, I, I just felt like there was no like really. It was going to an R, like. Uh, it was going to go to the simulation again. Because like, yeah. like this is a situation. It is a like honestly, what he's throwing up is like kind of a foolproof argument because it's just like, well, science can't disprove it. Like this is what this is the That's argument. You know, it's like science can't too. disprove it. Science is like wrong. And then where we think that like science is right and interesting or whatever, that could be part of the simulation. <laughs> and I don't know. There's just Marvel, like Marvel comics go above and beyond uh, Cyclops's powers. They come. Uh, he has lasers that come from a uni uh, from a um, from a universe where the laws of physics don't apply. So his <laughs> a universe made whatever. of lasers. Yeah, yeah. Basically, it's like the laws of, <laughs> the laws of Newton doesn't apply. Those are people. Like, Those are people flying happened. out of his eyes, just fucking laser yeah. people from the laser universe screaming. <laughs> but it's literally, his powers literally don't affect our laws of physics. Because it's from a universe where they don't exist, and oh, that, every time, yeah, every time, like, uh, uh, yeah, the the laws of uh, Newton or that. whatever, it's like whatever grab, like everything. His eyes don't follow that pattern. Like his lasers come from a universe where our laws of physics don't apply. So it's basically like anything can happen. I'm into. I think we should interview you next for Cyclops or theory. Because <laughs> like this is fucking interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's fucking intense, but that that's what I think of with a lot of conspiracy stuff because you can't you can't prove a conspiracist wrong. You can't. It, yeah. Otherwise, they would. You can debunk it a thousand times. They debunk the dumb bird thing that was yeah. created as a joke. You, people, still you can, it. you can, you can disprove a yeah, you can disprove a theorist. It. But yeah, not if they have like if they if they have like so within one framework if you if you had it in just one framework okay so for saying like uh, so physics are still what we use to like measure everything so like physics mathematics chemistry that's all on board but the Earth is flat not round you know which like, is what some of if, them believe exactly that's what some of them believe and that's kind of what I was imagining but so they it's, they can twist they can twist things that you believe to still believe it like I mean yeah you can, yeah, you can disprove it but they're still gonna believe it they'll find a way to twist around it a lot of people frame these types of conspiracy theorists as being like manipulative yeah, and yeah. like uh like you know causing problems in other people's lives by perpetuating things that are like uh, popularly or largely believed to be like you know false. And uh, I didn't get that feeling from him at all. No. But I did get the feeling that he's like a, t a, t a TV kind of guy. You know, he's having fun doing this. He's like, oh, you know, good. Flat yeah. Earth is taking me places that I never imagined I would go. And like, and, and, and you know, good good for you, pal. Dude, you're like going around meeting people, <laughs> oh, doing shows and, and shit. It's like, yeah, fucking A. As soon as <laughs> That's <he> one way. <laughs> as soon as he came on here, sound like you, you were watching a talk show. The way yeah. he started talking, like he was prepped for the camera, like he was just ready for it. Yeah, like, I do. I want to do oh, more guests so months, bad, dude. And, oh my god, dude! And I was very envious about it because I wish I could be that convincing at it. I should have asked. I should have asked Mark about this. Uh, this one theory, though, it's like we're we we're on a globe. We're on a globe still, but globe. like, okay. but it's like a uh, it's like a golf ball, and like each little pit is their own little world, so that oh one yeah. Pit Earth and it has an ice wall around it, and then if you go out of that pit, you can go to another one. He would have gotten world. so excited about that if you would have said that. I think he would, I, like, he might have heard that already, but like, I feel like that's something he would be really interested in. <laughs> yes. I, I really enjoyed this. Um, I was super fucking. Yes, nervous. I thought I thought we all I'm, did really good because yeah. we've been yeah. stressing about this. And, I felt like and, I might have said some dumb things. And I was nervous. Just, I thought about saying Truman I'm not going to come. I, I thought don't, about I, saying like, yeah, I'm not dude, go. I almost did the same thing. I almost was gonna say I was, I was gonna say I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Justin, we got we got to do this outro real quick so Mike doesn't have to sift through all this. All right, thank you guys for tuning in to our Flat Earth episode featuring Mark Sargent. He said to find him anywhere, just go on any search engine and type in Flat Earth and Mark, and you'll possibly find your way to him. Um. But yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Casey. I'm Mike. I'm Jumbo Joe. I'm Nate Nasty.
Thank you and good night. Yeah, thank y'all.